Welcome to the TV broadcast of Accelerate Church. Pastor Jeremy File is teaching his series, Living Biblically. Did you know that doing what God's Word says can change your life? It can transform everything about the way you live. So let's join Pastor Jeremy right now for some instruction about just how to live biblically. It's the Word that causes you to become a partaker of the divine nature. See, God's wanting to do something in and through you in your life, but he doesn't have access if his word doesn't have access. Look what it says here. Having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Well, this, I'm telling you, there's so much revelation in this. God has given us everything that we need in the word. Yeah, that's his escape plan from the world. Some people say, I just can't stop sinning. Well, the word hasn't taken hold of you yet. There are habits that you have created that are carnal, that are fleshly. Some of them may not even be named here, but anything that's addictive. Like I didn't find a scripture about poker except for the guys that basically got into poker for Jesus' garment. Now, why would I want to side with that? Guys that just crucified Jesus. And then say, well, y'all's not going to hold me accountable. Psh, thank God I got delivered from that. Thank God I was able to repent from that. Aren't you glad you were able to repent from your old lifestyle and stupidity too? Glory to God. Better I tell my story than yours. <laughs> Some people get angry. You don't need to get angry. You just need to repent. And you got to let the Word of God do what the Word of God can do and only what it can do, which is make you a partaker of the divine nature. Yeah, it's the Word where we find the exceedingly great and precious promises. By the way, a promise is only as good as the person making the promise. <laughs> I promise you, I'll be there tomorrow at this time. And yet you hadn't showed up on time in two years. That promise means nothing to that person. You follow that? You may promise your boss, I'll be on time tomorrow. You haven't been on time in two years straight. He don't believe you. That promise means nothing. But we have a God that cannot lie. Not only does he not lie, he cannot lie. And when he makes a promise, it's good. Somebody say, it's good. Yeah, take note that these promises are only found in the Word of God that are called exceedingly great and precious. So when we do the Word, we become partakers of the divine nature. When we do the Word, we escape the corruption that's in this world. Isn't that good news? This is how you escape corruption. Be a doer of the Word. And 2 Peter 1, 3 out of the contemporary English version says, the first part of it, we have everything we need to live a life that pleases God. Ooh, I like that. Let me tell you tonight, if your choices are supported by the Word of God, it pleases God. But if not, you can't just say, well, God's good with it. He's not falling off the throne. It don't take all that. These are little cliches that people say to live unbiblical. But if we're going to live biblically, we've got to just forget all that trash and say, where is it at in the Word? Why? Because if my choices are supported by the Word, then it pleases God. But if my choices aren't supported by the Word in 2023, it doesn't please God. And it doesn't please Him just because I feel like it does. For something to be biblical, it must be what? Bible. Yeah. People have this idea. It's very... It's very um, predominant. It's very common in our day that they say they can weigh in on how I feel about an issue such as marriage. You know, love is love. He loves us all the same. I saw it on the church billboard. Wow. You know, my wife and I have been counting how many churches start with the name first lately. First, first this, first that, first, 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 first. I saw one of those, God loves us all the same. Well, I said, I, sh I hope the wind blows that placard down because <laughs> that ain't true. Somebody said, yeah, it is too true. Okay, it's true. In this sense, he died for everybody. But what good does that do to talk about that to all the people burning in hell? And those that are living just like the people burning in hell that won't listen to God's warning now. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. He does love you, darling. You need to know that. He was beaten, didn't even look human for you. But do you care? So people say, well, I, when you word it that way, oh, I do care. Yeah, but your whole lifestyle, you choose not to follow him. 
And you want to still say it pleases God, but everything that does please Him, He's recorded right here in the Bible. Amen? The people, it's I'm telling you, it's very common in our day for people to say, well, this is how I feel about drinking. Well, that doesn't make it okay. This is how I feel about, um, you know, how to vote. Okay. Your daddy, your grandpappy raised you to be blue. Well, guess what? Whether they raised you to be blue or red when it comes to the voting booth, you need the Bible on the matter. <laughs> Better stop that. that the sacred cows start rearing up real quick. Fur goes up and everything. What about what church to be planted in? Well, most of you here on a Wednesday night, you're not, you know, you're here, so you're like, yeah. What about child training? Yeah. What about something like abortion? You see what I'm saying? Like people, well, this is what I think about it. Woo! And most people, when they say that, without saying the words, what they're really trying to tell you is God's good with it. Well, just because you think something's okay and God's good with it doesn't mean he's good with it if it's not in the Bible. When he says, I was with you in your mother's womb, when he says, I charted out your days in the womb, when he says, I hate the shedding of innocent blood, you don't have to be the sharpest tool in the shed to realize that God is very pro-life. Yeah. So you don't need somebody weighing in on their opinion. Well, I don't know that he is. What? I'm sorry you're ignorant of the word, but I've already read the scriptures. You've come too late to tell me that God's good with it because of certain situations. See, people like to become situationists. Say, well, the situation determines. The situation doesn't determine it. The word determines it. Did you catch that? The situation never determines right or wrong. The Bible determines right or wrong. If Jesus is our Lord, in 2023, his word will reign supreme in our life, which is the reason, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, Jesus says in Luke 6, 46, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? You know, when Jesus dropped this right here, he's letting us know a very powerful truth. It ain't going to work for you to say all the right words and ignore his word. Hang out just enough to get enough knowledge to know how to go through your word formula to try to get God to move in your life, but yet not have any interest in following him. I'm just letting you know, living biblical is a lordship issue. That's what it is. If Jesus is your Lord, then it really does matter what the Bible says about every one of those issues I mentioned and many, many others. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. How should you act on your job? Well, it depends on my boss. No, it doesn't. It doesn't depend on your boss. And it doesn't depend what side of the bed you woke up on. It doesn't, de it, listen, whether or not you got your Christmas bonus, that is not the factor. Well, that went over big. We don't have the authority to say, that's good, that's bad. That's righteous, that's sinful, without a basis in the Word of God. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. There are some telltale signs you're living biblically. You want to look at a few of them tonight before we go? There are some telltale signs when you're living biblical. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 30. Say it one more time. Thank God for the word. Let's hit a few scriptures here. Proverbs 30 and verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. Whew. Wow. That's, that's worth meditating on. Every word of God is pure. He's a shield to those who put their trust in Him. 
Well, people are saying stuff. Well, I, you know, it doesn't matter what people are saying. What matters is, does the pure word of God have a place in your life? Well, I'm under pressure right now. I know, but what does the word say? Because it doesn't change just because pressure's been amped up. You follow me tonight? Therefore, we can know if something, if it's not pure, it's not Bible. Did you catch that? We can know this. If it is not pure, then it's not Bible because the Bible always leads you to purity. So that's why you can always even tell your children this. If they have to hide from you, parent, what they're doing, then they know good and well this isn't, this isn't right because if you're doing something pure, you don't care that your parents walk in on you looking at your device. Do you hear me, young people? You don't care. You don't have anything to hide. You say, here, look. But see, when you got to hide, and I already referred to that, but let me just tell you this. When I was secretly playing for money online, I'll never forget because one night Aaron walks in the bedroom and she comes in, I'm like, because I told her I'd already quit. And there I was online playing again. She's like, what are you doing? Well, let me see what you were doing over there. Back then it was on a big laptop. You know, that was old school for those young people. They're like, what's that? They used to have laptop computers. Wasn't just a little device like this that you can exit out of real quick. See, if your parent walks in, or let's say pastor walks in, and you, I gotta hide it, I gotta hide it, then you know good and well that's not pure, it's not Bible, right? But I want you to think about your life because most of the time people don't walk in on you when you're doing something impure, right? But God's watching, and He's saying, Well, are you lawless or do you abide by the parameters of my word? See, a lot of people, they attend church when they want to. He has said, assemble more and more. Now, you're here. Don't look at me like I'm talking to you. He said, assemble more and more, not less and less. So when the, when the Lord says that in Hebrews chapter 10, what you need to know for sure is the enemy's going to come and try to get you to stop attending church, especially in light of us hearing that church attendance is the number one maneuver that protects us against the enemy. Who wouldn't want you to go to church? It's that simple. But we make it more convoluted. Well, but you don't know. I'm busy. I got kids. Yeah, I know. Seven of them. But we're here. It's church. We're here. Yeah, but you're a pastor. I know, but here's what you need to know. I'm anointed to preach the word, but I have the same anointing you have to do the word. There's no super anointing to do the word. We all have the believer's anointing to do the word. We've got to do the word. Look at your neighbor saying, I'm a doer of the word. Look what verse 6 says, Proverbs 30. Are you glad you're here tonight? It says, do not add to his words lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. This is why I will reread and reread different passages over and over. In fact, today I was... I'm, I'm, you know, I've been with so many people today, I don't remember wh who it was exactly. But I said, hang on, I want to read this again. It's not because I don't know it, but a lot of times I want to go back and make sure, that, well, number one, it's still there and hadn't changed. Number two, I didn't add a few words or take a few away. Because that's easy to do if you just remain, re you know, rely on your old peanut here. <laughs> it's going to be difficult because you'll forget a word or two and change what God said. Yeah. Uh, I got tickled to somebody, another pastor friend of mine. He said, I was reading your Google reviews, and I knew we'd be good friends because of those. Because the same people, well, not the same people, but the people were saying the same things they said about us. He said, but I did find one real interesting. I said, yeah, what, what was that? He said, the, the person said they loved the church, but they tried to record with their device, and you had an usher tell them to stop recording. I said, oh, yeah. Well, I said, that's because I've been in radio my whole life, and my job for many, many years was editing. And I found out if you get audio of someone, you can make them say something they didn't say if you have the right equipment. Chop a word out here, take a word out. It's been happening to God for centuries. He's given his word, chop that out, X that out, forget what that says. Let's just piece this, this, and this together. Next thing you know, you say, well, God said this. Well, God didn't say that. But you might be shocked to find out if you have an NIV and a couple other different versions too. That there are literally verses just MIA. They're not in there. They're gone. I remember the first time a guy told me that. Ike, a guy told me, he said, uh, 
what, what version do you have? I don't remember what I had at the time, but he said, uh, go look up the book of Acts where Philip is talking to the eunuch, you know, and he asked him, what must I do to be born again? And, and the reply was, you must repent, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be baptized, taken out. I went and looked, sure enough, it was gone, literally just gone. You're reading there and the verse is gone. I was like, Wow. And here's, here's what, the notations was at the bottom of the page. Some manuscripts do not have that verse, so they just took the liberty to take it out. Well, guess what? It just so happened that it was on the demand on what you have to do to be born again. Coincidence or not. You just better be careful what version of the Bible you have and depend on. That was for free. I'm not receiving an offering for that one, okay? But it's, you would be wise to reread Get your physical paper Bible out. Reread different passages. Look, I, I spend the majority of my time studying online. I love all those tools. I have an awesome Bible app that helps me out. But I, there's sometimes, I, it's just, I hunger just to read the pages and see the paper. Right? I just love it. I love it. And I'll go back and I'll say, let me make sure that's still there. Okay. Many people live a lie. Because they don't care about living biblically. They'll get married under God's good graces, right? And then they'll want their marriage to be the way they want it to be. They don't even consult with how God wants it to be. Same way with their church attendance. Same way with training their children. Same way with the way they are on their job. Same way in every area of life. It's time for praise and worship. Do you lift up your hands? Do you? Well, that's not my style. Well, the Bible tells you to lift up hands. No man came up with that. God did. God wants you. He created your hands, and he wants your hands up. The universal sign of surrender is hands up. It's supposed to be your surrender to your Lord and Savior. And you get around other saints of God, whether it's your style or your favorite song or not, you ought to lift up holy hands to him. Why? Because it's Bible. See, but it ain't my style. Well, it's Bible. Make the Bible your style. I mean, stop talking about it. This is the way I was raised. Who cares if it's not Bible? You got to have that mindset. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for Life Links. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect Life Link group. What's the first telltale sign that you're living biblically? You're going to live pure. That's why Psalms 12 and verse 6 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Newsflash, all those words that just pop into your mind when you want to say them, especially when you're mad, they haven't been tried. But every word right here in the Bible, it's already been tried. Somebody said, well, what, what, what does that mean? Well, Hang in there. I'll talk about it more here in just a minute. It means it's been tested. It means it's been proven. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like silver tried in a furnace. Literally, that word tried is what we get our word welded from. It's like taking two pieces of metal. This is what it said when I was reading this in the Hebrew. And, and you cause them to become one. Isn't that amazing? If you weld something together... It usually holds together pretty well, doesn't it? If you have a welder, it knows what he's doing. Well, God's word has already been tried. So in other words, it's not going to fail. It's not going to tear apart. It's not going to let you down in the moment of heat. You know what? When we do the word, we're following the tried path, the tested path. When we take our own way of doing it, it's not tested. It's unsure, the turnout. You can do it if you want. You can say God's not mad, all that stuff. That's no comfort. It's not, it's not a path that God endorses or blesses. He only blesses the one that's tried. 
I got to move quick. Psalm 33, verse 4, for the word of the Lord is right. See, somebody says, you don't always have to be right. Well, what's wrong with it? I mean, what's wrong with following the word in every area? You think you're always right. Now, look, I, I know we get talking about, you know, things like, well, I'm from the south, you're from the north, the south's better than the north, whatever. That's just all opinion, right? I'm a Cowboy fan. Oh, let me guess. You're a Giants fan. I mean, okay, whatever, right? My team's better than your team. None of that stuff holds any weight. None of that even matters. Well, you think you're always right. You think the Cowboys are the best team. Well, it's just, that's just an opinion. And, and to start mixing that with the way we look at the word is a gross way of living, actually. You see, when it comes to things like I'm married to the same woman coming up on 21 years, and I ain't looking for no other. Somebody said, well, you don't know what all's out there. And I ain't about to start looking either. Why? Why? Because the proven path is that God is a witness at my wedding. And he's watching how I treat the wife of my youth. Somebody says, really? Is that in there? Yeah, Malachi. I read it sometime. He literally says to his people, you were treacherous with your wife. Those are words you don't want to hear from the master. When now in the New Testament we see the command to all of us husbands, love your wife as Christ has loved the church, laid his life down for the church, gave it all for the church, knowing that not everybody in the church is going to even follow him. Man, it gets real quiet. In a Holy Ghost filled Pentecostal church when you preach straight. This is how you derail the enemy in your life. The word of the Lord's right, and all his work is done in truth. You just need to know this something isn't right just because you feel like it's right. I just feel like it's right. But if it's biblical, then it's right. If you got Bible for bringing tithes, then you know it's right. But you, 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 you stray from this and you start watching men, especially on YouTube, you're going to sit, and we're on YouTube right now, you know, but you're going to sit here and say, well, that guy said not to tithe. He says he has Bible for it. But see, when you weigh that with the weight of the Scripture, then you know what's true. Let me talk about drinking again because this is always something that comes up. People say, well, my friends and my family said Jesus turned water into wine. Or if they know the Bible a little more, Paul told Timothy to drink a little wine for his stomach's sake. If they know it even better, they'll say Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon said wine is good. It's good to look at too. Okay, what else? What else do I need? That's three right there. I know, but there's 75 that are against it. If I was to tell you, I've got a pile of $1 bills, and I want you to pick the pile that's the most. In one hand, I've got three $1 bills. In the other hand, I've got 75. Now, you choose which one. Which one is the most? Which one would you choose? Every time? Verses 3? See, this is how you weigh out whether or not what you believe is biblical. You take the weight of it and you say, if I was to measure that in gold bars, say, well, you pick. Most people are selling for three, which, by the way, if they'll study, all three of those could be taken away. One, Solomon was in rebellion when he said it. Two, why would Timothy even ask Paul about drinking grape juice, which is what that word wine meant? Why would he ask him when the water was poisonous? If he should even do it as a preacher. You see what I'm talking about? Three, the bread of life, you're telling me, made alcoholic beverage. Why? No, the master of the ceremony there said, you save the best for last. What's the best? The freshest. Right off the vine, squeezed. They never defined in that culture the best was the fermented grape juice. There was no other way back then for you to get drunk. So 
any word wine in the Bible is not going to mean wine like when you walk in the spirit aisle at the grocery store and see all those bottles there. The percentage of wine in that, in that one bottle, you would have to drink most of the time 12 fermented grape juice. Then you say, well, how fermented? You let it sit there for a long time. Yeah, you sit there a long time, you can't even drink it. So the point is this. When Jesus, the bread of life, turned water to wine as his first miracle, he didn't make it alcoholic and take it through that process of fermentation, the death process. Thank you very much. I'm smarter than that. So there goes your three gold bars on that. I still have 75 that warn you, which is heavier. You get it. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. You get it. But you need to be sure up in that because, folks, it's all around us. Well, God, God don't really care. Yes, he does. Well, I know a bunch of preachers that do it. That doesn't change the word of God. Is it biblical? Is it biblical? Who cares that you find preachers that are perverts? I mean, that don't mean nothing. There's more perverted preaching going on right now in the USA than has ever gone on in the USA. I know preacher so so disagrees. I don't care. Don't even tell me. I don't want to be disappointed in knowing about somebody else that does it. I don't want to go to Outback again and see another preacher that I've gone to prayer meetings with and see him over there drinking. I don't want to see that again. I'm not looking for this. But I watched that happen. And I watched people come in here, get delivered, get set free. They were alcoholics, almost ruined their marriage, almost ruined their life. Then say, I'm going over here to so-and-so. They have no idea that dude's a drinker deluxe. What's coming back on you, man? I wish I, I, wish I didn't even have to say these things. People, well, you talking about somebody specific? I'm talking about six people specifically. How many more is it going to take? What in the world is going on? Do you want to be free or not? It's the word that's right. Not mom, not dad. It's the word that's right. Thank God my mom and dad were right. But it's because I found it in the word. I don't just say hats off to Ricky and Diana Fowler. It's because I honor them because they did the word. I lived with them 23 years. I saw them do the word. Well, oh, it's my mom and dad. If they ain't doing the word, you might as well run for your life. like that. I don't like it either. I wish everyone followed the word. But the word is right. Not your cousin. The word is right. The word is right. You got that? It's the word that's right. Wow, what a powerful, life-changing message when we turn from doing things our own way to doing them God's way. Well, there's more to this message, and if you'd like to hear it in its entirety, it is available on our website at AccelerateChurch.cc. Or we would love to have you with us in person at Accelerate Church in Amarillo at 4400 South Crockett Street. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. We would love to see you there. Or we'll see you next time here on the Accelerate Church television broadcast.